Um, a couple of comments uh, that, and a takeaway for me from all of this, and I think uh, Pavlov raised it with the Sheptitsky Institute. Unless you have clout, you are going to continue to be downtrodden by people who are holding your money. The community has $54 million, according to uh, Dr. Patrician, but you have little bang for your buck with the, with, with the management, if you will, of your money. So that's ha that has to change. That paradigm has to change. Pavlov suggested some models. I'm out there advocating with different uh, universities that uh, endowments start to be placed within the Shevchenko Foundation in perpetuity for particular programs. Uh, to develop the independence from universities to be able to tell them, if you don't like it, we will go somewhere else. The fa fact of the matter is, Kiyos cannot say right now to the University of Alberta, you know, we're leaving for the University of Toronto. Oh, and how do you intend on doing that and leaving your money behind? And so I think the Shevtitsky Institute example and the foundation were eventually uh, the concept of uh, Eastern Christian Studies uh, sort of fell out of favor with St. Paul University and their secularism eventually resulted in them leaving, but leaving with their money and leaving uh, with some power and authority to negotiate with the University of Toronto. So those models have to be continued. Um, the people in the room, you know, you're, you're the beneficiaries of literally hundreds of millions of dollars of cash that's flowed to you to allow you to do what you've done. So for you to say you're not part of the community or that the community should not have a say in what you do, quite frankly, is for me not, not in the cards. I think before you shuffle off your mortal coil, you give back to your community some way. And you either give back that way to some of the programs that you were involved in, or you give back to the greater community. And I, I think Paul and I would both say that long after we're gone, we've put in processes, and I think Nadia would probably agree, We've put in processes for our organizations to basically last in perpetuity. So that's, ex that's extremely important. Thirdly, your customers, your students, have to think that even though what you may teach may not result in a particular career, that somehow it's relevant in their lives. Relevant enough for them to, to start to experiment with uh, courses uh, in Ukrainian education relevant enough to talk to their kids about it, and provide an interest level. And so those would be my comments in the two minutes, point five, that you gave me. OK, well, um, for me, I guess my takeaway here is, is that uh, where foundations are concerned, I think we do need some kind of um, loose networking. Uh, to, sh to share information, I think different um, foundations or organizations have information or informed at different levels. And um, I think we've all had you know, our own experiences, and I think we do need to be able to share some of those stories so that we are all better, always better prepared to deal with whatever situations as they come up. Um, the other is, um, I think, some kind of, um, you know, I don't know, priority setting uh, is needed Without tying down, I recognize that you know at the within each university there are different priorities, and and uh, Ukrainian studies at within each university has there's another I guess um, um, reporting line, but it it would help for at least I can speak for our foundation to have a better sense of where are always the gaps, what, where are the needs, both from the on the academic side and also what the community sees as needs, so that when we are dealing with donors or in terms of we're even reviewing you know applications, we can have some of that information that that knowledge that we can apply. So, I'm looking for really um, networking and, and increased communications um, from all parties. Roman? Oh, there's the other mic. Is this one fixed? <clears throat> each, uh, each university <clears throat> is in competition with the other. And the Ukrainian programs at different universities are in competition. I regard competition as a good thing. The more competition, the more the message gets out inside the Ukrainian community about endowments or funding individual programs. 
we need to understand that we can trust each other in Ukrainian studies. We can operate as a national community of interest while competing so that a trust relationship, sharing of information, uh, transparency are the elements that are needed to create a much more powerful vehicle than we currently have. Uh, the models used in the 1980s, 1990s, and so on, I think, have shown what they can do. The time has come to imagine and vision a different kind of model for fundraising. There are many people in Canada, not just of Ukrainian background, as we've heard at this conference, who are interested in what we do. But the communication between uh, the community, and particularly with donors, and the academy leaves much to be improved. We have the resources to do it. We just have to set that as a priority and focus on it. Nadiu? Uh, I don't have m a lot more to add to a lot of the good points that were raised uh, by the panelists. Um, in terms of um, Mr. or Dr. Petition's uh, idea of a, a different kind of model, a national model and so on for Ukrainian studies, um, I would just ask whether it would not be a good idea to do some study on other, let's say, ethnic groups that possibly have uh, very vast and successful studies at the different universities and take from what they do successfully and mimic it. Um, to try and create something from a new, uh, maybe not the most prudent way to go. It may be if there is no example to follow, then maybe then you, you basically have to be a pioneer and, and, and uh, with pioneering comes all kinds of challenges and risks to form a group like this. So I, I would urge, um, that maybe somebody, and I don't know if it would be me, <laughs> I'm not, not volunteering myself for it, it, but just to see, or maybe the um, academic uh, institutes know or can help us with knowing how other ethnic communities are successful with their studies, be it the Chinese, be it even the Russian, be it, um, you know, East Indian studies or, or anything sim somewhat similar to ours. <coughs> Okay, uh, we always open all these sessions up to the students. Uh, any grad students from the back that like to come and ask a question or give a remark or comments, anything? Okay, we've got a question up front here. Please go to the microphone. Um, there's two microphones set up here up front. Larissa Blavatska from Ottawa. Thank you for this very excellent, very informative panel, which addressed issues that I personally have been interested in for some time. I was very uh, interested throughout the two-day sessions that some of the issues that, well, many of the issues that Ukrainian studies, um, whether scholars or administrators, are uh, grappling with are felt throughout um, the humanities and social scientists, uh, social sciences, and that is the corporatization of the university system has hit the Faculty of Arts, for particularly, say, in this university, which has also undertaken a very misguided effort to be in the top 20 universities internationally. This is an impossible goal. Um, and it has really disproportionately affected the liberal arts, the study of liberal arts at this university. One of my particular concerns is what is the status of the institute here at the university? It was at one point, my understanding, an independent institution affiliated with the university. It is now under the umbrella of the Faculty of Arts, and reports to the Dean of Arts. I wasn't very happy with the comments made by the Dean of Arts. I didn't feel that they were very reassuring, a lot of platitudes, but nothing very specific about what the university can do to continue uh, championing the health of the Institute. I have a request, not a question, 
My request would be that the Institute inform members of the community about three things. One is, what is the administrative status of the Institute? I know a lot of the administration has been taken over by the university, but what is the status of the Institute? Um, and here I'm not looking for, uh, you know, pages of explanatory information, but really what is the status? What is the status of the endowment funds? There are a lot of stories. There was an email sent by a professor at this university a few days ago, which I think many people have seen. My understanding is that the endowment arts, uh, the endowment funds, which do specify how they can be used, that's fair enough, so the institute can't uh, take uh, funds uh, that the donor allocated for the study of uh, poetry to fund um, a center in Kharkiv or Ukrainian-Canadian studies, that's understood. But my understanding, or at least I've heard, um, various comments in, over the last few years is that the endowment funds themselves have been taken over by the university uh, for uses other than that specified by the donors. Uh, thirdly, I think donors such as myself, I'm not a large donor, but I've given enough money to be invited for lunch at one point by the Dean of Arts. Um, so I have not given money for the last two years because I have not been able to find out what is happening. I would ask you, uh, Professor Krauchenko, um, perhaps put the information on your website, um, perhaps send an email or letters to your mailing list to clarify this for people such as myself. I'm very happy to continue contributing, but I need reassurance that that money is going to be used by the Institute and that it's not going to be taken over by the University for something that I wasn't planning to uh, subsidize. Um, lastly, I, I would like to congratulate the uh, organizers. This has been a very uh, stimulating two days. I've certainly learned a lot. Uh, it was wonderful that both Professor Lupo and Petra Savarin uh, were here. Um, it was wonderful that we heard from uh, Bishop Gudziak. I think it was great that so many people who have been instrumental in furthering uh, Ukrainian studies in Canada and abroad were here. Um, wonderful to hear everyone addressing this very um, pertinent topic. So thank you. Thank you. Are, is there anybody else that would like to raise an issue? Go ahead. We're coming to the end of our session uh, in the sense that time is up and we need a little wrap up with our uh, uh, director. So maybe um, Ms. Blavatska's questions could be answered by the director when he has his final remark. Later on. Yeah, for the future. Yeah. Okay, let's take this uh, question or this remark. I don't have an issue at all. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to congratulate CUSE on its 40th anniversary and to thank the panelists for your presentations. I'm here today wearing a new hat. I'm the community liaison for the Cool Folklore Centre as of two weeks ago and I have been assigned the task of helping introduce our new director, Dr. Yelena Pogosyan. And my takeaway from today's session, actually from the whole day, was a um, expressed the best by Dr. N not Dr. I wish <laughs> Andrei Hladoshelsky, uh, with his passionate demonstration on how important it is to interact with our stakeholders. You actually walked down those steps and came down to our level, um, which is, I think, something all of us have to do. Whether if we want new students in our classrooms, we've got to go out there into the classrooms, recruit online. Um, mingle with the students. If you want money, there are a lot of examples, six institutions that Dr. Uh, Patrician presented who had people who were actually interactive with their stakeholders. Bogdan Medvitsky, every one of you on, your, uh, on the panel here have gone out, had coffee with potential donors, um, explained to them why the money's needed and um, the re 
how we will be responsible with the money that they have invested with us. We have to interact with them, make them feel comfortable with what we're doing. And lastly, I just wanted to comment on how Paul Grod interacted with the stakeholders. I think it's um, the UCC resolution for an academic advisory council is really worth considering, and I'm glad it's been brought forward. Thank you. From the panelists, any final remark uh, that you wanted to make? Okay, Professor Medvitsky. My question is simply, you have three foundations represented here. My question is, would it be kosher if between the three foundations you gave uh, each other the outcomes of your investment policy? Okay. Which is the best, which is the worst, or which is in between? So from the three foundations, this will be the final remarks. Well, uh, we're pretty transparent. I think I just handed that out to everybody. So I, I, I think you, you will kind of know. Um, uh, you know, one issue that I have, not with the people up here, but many of the community monies that are out there is how unprofessional the money management is of many community organizations, uh, some of them related to academics, some non-academic, and I, and I think using some of the people up here and their expertise in how they manage their funds would be beneficial for the overall community if we could if we could coalesce some of that community money so that community leaders lead and not think they're investors and that that, that that's something but the foundation's policies are all there in our annual report and available on our website um, I'm in support of what uh, Olga, Olga Kuploska said, that uh, it would be good to have gatherings uh, between the different uh, interest groups that have the same interests at mind. I'm not so sure that I'm excited about another intermediary or another level of organization over, um, uh, over overseeing, let's say, uh, the foundation that are already doing a good work. Um, I'm just, the jury's still out on whether that's something I would support. Oiho, anything you wanted to add? Well, um, I actually wanted to support what uh, Larissa was requesting, and that would be true not just for Kios. I think a lot, like, I know when we're approached by donors, people don't have a clear enough idea of how things work within universities. Uh, budgeting and the costs, and that's what comes up from very often. And sometimes, you know, we even don't have full information. So, I find that the more we can educate the people about how universities work, how what costs and and how budgets are set up, you know, you the more you inform your your stakeholders, uh, the better. You know, they will be prepared to. You know, people when they see that there's going to be a return on their investment, they're, they're prepared to, to support, but they need that information. And I think now you want to have an informed consumer. So I would ask that whoever is in a position to share that information, but that that information does need to get out. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank our panelists and our discussant uh, for this. Manoli, Prosho. Just bring the mic to him, yeah. In view of the time, I really will be brief. Thank you. Uh, a suggestion was made by myself earlier when there was a Ukrainian clean panel here. That, and I'm very glad to see that you're here, Paul Grod. The suggestion was very simple, that we should have more emphasis on Ukrainian Canadian studies, and the suggestion was specifically that uh, the next Congress, Ukrainian Canadian Congress, have a whole day devoted to just that subject on an agenda prepared perhaps by the director's consortium that was just, which was suggested, which is a good idea, or by your advisory committee. I don't care how the thing is structured. I don't care about models. I don't care about that. Let's get going. That's all. But let's have that session because the public needs to be sensitized. The public has to, their consciousness has to be aroused that they are giving money as Ukrainian Canadians and there very little study of them really as people who are donating. Thank you. <coughs> I, I repeat, 
it would be good to have a whole day with the agenda previously prepared. So it's not a wondering exercise, not a praising exercise. Something does come, come, con 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 concrete come out of it. If I could just quickly respond to that. Uh, Professor ahead. Lupo, I, I fully, fully support and endorse what you've just proposed. And I have to say that this is I would, a new chapter in the relationship between the Ukrainian and Canadian Congress and uh, the, the directors and uh, and CUSE and uh, the academic community of Ukrainian studies. I think there was has been traditionally um, a uh, an misunderstanding, perhaps even a distrust of one another. And I think that uh, this last Congress, the 25th Congress, was uh, was the first time in my in my memory uh, that CUSE took such an active role and. Being here and hearing what you're suggesting is not just the community coming together and saying, we need to bring together the uh, uh, academics in Ukrainian studies. Because it's one thing for the community to say, we want to do this. But that really is, is, is not particularly effective if this community doesn't want to be involved. So if I'm hearing you correctly, there is a, uh, a sentiment, I can't, say it's, uh, I can't say it's a complete consensus, but there's a strong sentiment here that there is an interest in doing that, and we will take up that call. Thank you. Thanks. On behalf of all of our uh, participants, we want to thank the panelists and the discussant, and uh, we'll turn over the mic to uh, Volodymyr Krauchenko for his closing remarks.